This is now our new finished floor line. And now our bottom riser is the correct height. Dropping the carriage also lowers the top to the correct position. One more thing. I like to anchor my carriages to the subfloor. This line represents our finished floor line and is our cut line since we're using carpet on our stairway. If we had planned on using three quarter inch oak flooring and had adjusted for this in our total rise calculations, I would want to add the thickness of this flooring to the bottom of my carriage. And this new line would represent our subfloor. I'm using a skill worm drive saw, which is the same saw I use for all my framing. Only here I've put on a 40 tooth carbide blade to get a smooth cut. The first cut I make is for the top tread. And this cut is for where the hanger board attaches to the carriage. You can see I have to hold up the guard with my thumb because the saw is coming at an angle to the board. Don't be tempted to wedge up the guard because if the saw kicks back you might get cut. This is the cut for the top riser, well on the waist side of the line. And here's the cut for the top tread, also on the waist side of the line. Don't be tempted to let these cuts overlap as I've seen some carpenters do. They want that chunk to drop out without using a handsaw, but it weakens the carriage. Let me show you what this looks like on the back side. When I'm making my cuts with a handsaw, I want to be sure not to go any further than the imaginary lines. After I finish cutting out the rest of these notches, I use this carriage as a pattern for our other two. Okay, now I've got all the carriages cut and I'd like to show you a few more details on the model. These little notches in the bottom of the carriage are to slip over this anchor. This will keep the carriages from sliding forward over time. Up here at the top, let me show you how we're going to attach the carriages to the header. This is a hanger board. It's nothing more than a piece of three quarter inch plywood. We're going to nail the hanger board to the header and then nail our carriages from the back side through the hanger board. This is a good way to attach the carriages, but it's not the only way, and I've got other alternatives in the book. Now, we're going to put up our hanger board. I want this hanger board to be really secure because it holds up all the carriages. For a permanent installation, I'd use 8 or 10 16 penny nails. Now I've nailed down the top of my hanger board, and I want to mark where my carriage goes. I measured down from the top of my finished floor, 7 and 11 sixteenths inch, and an inch and an eighth more to the bottom of the tread. This is the top of my cut carriage. Okay, I'm right on my mark, tied against the hanger board. I'm going to temporarily tack this in place so I can make some marks on the studs for a 2x4 spacer bore that I'm going to install in a minute. Now I've got my 2x4 spacer in place. I'm going to nail my carriage to that 2x4. This 2x4 creates a nice space here so I can bring my sheetrock in and my finished skirt board when the time comes. I'm nailing through the back of the hanger board into the carriages with some 16 penny nails, two into each carriage. If this still doesn't seem like enough, I'll use a metal clip on the front where the carriage meets the hanger board. This is the kickboard I showed you in the model. I'm nailing it down with a couple 16 penny nails. When you do this, try and hit the floor joist instead of just the plywood. You only see me using two nails, but three or four would be better. Since I've cut the kickboard to the right length, all I have to do is slide the carriage to the end of it and nail it in place. Then I center the third carriage and tack it also. Now 
that I've finished installing the carriages, I'm ready to rip the treads and risers. I set the fence for the width of the tread. I'm using inch and an eighth plywood for these treads, but you could use three quarter inch stuff. I prefer this though for a sturdier tread. With the treads cut, I set the saw to rip the risers. You don't need to use inch and eighth plywood for the risers. Three quarters will be fine because no one will be walking on them. And it's really helpful to have a second person to catch the cutoffs. I have to do one more thing before installing these treads. I'm going to ease the edge with a one inch diameter round over bit. It's easier to bend the carpet around this soft edge and it'll last a lot longer. I start with the second riser up. I flush it up with the carriage and tack it in place with a small nail. Then I drill a pilot hole for some screws. The pilot hole is the shank size of the screw. I only have to drill a hole in the plywood because the screw will cut its own threads in the carriage. Just installed our first riser. I've installed it in a good bed of construction adhesive. I'd ripped it to our calculated rise of 7 and 11 16 inch. I've also got a stack of treads which I'd ripped to our calculated run plus the nosing for 11 and an eighth. My rough stairwell opening is 38 and a half inches, and by the time I put my sheetrock and my skirt boards in, I'll have a 36 inch wide stairway. I've cut the treads a little shorter and the risers so they'll fit easily between the skirt boards. If there's any crack later on, it'll be covered when we carpet the stairway. This is the bottom riser. It's shorter than all the others by the thickness of one tread because it sits directly on the floor whereas this riser has a tread which laps up onto it. Now I'll install this riser, then a tread, and we'll work our way up the stairway. As you can see, I really believe in this goop. I use it everywhere where wood meets wood. It'll really keep the squeaks down in the future. As with the risers, I flush it up, tack it in place, and sink it tight with sheetrock screws. Now a couple more screws from the back will turn all these pieces into one solid unit. Now that I've installed about half the treads, I thought I'd pop up here and show you a few things. Our hanger board is going to serve as our last riser since we removed three quarters of an inch from our carriage when we cut it. Also, when I installed the subfloor, I left it long. Now I'm going to have to cut it to the right width, an inch and an eighth. I'll also need to put a little notch here for my skirt board, and I'll show you that when we go back to the model. Before I finish the last of our treads and risers, I want to show you a few alternative ways to finish this side of the stairway. If we didn't have a wall here, and this was an open stairway, we could notch a finish board like this, just the same as our carriage, and hang our treads and risers over, and let the carpet wrap around and butt into that board. We could put up a whole unnotched board like this, just let our treads butt into that. If this was a utility stairs, we might leave this open, although these risers add a lot to the strength of the stairway. If it was a utility stairs, we might use a 2x12 here, and if it was an exterior